Hey, what's up? It is Brianna, and today we're gonna just sit down and play with makeup. I don't know about you guys, but I'm in one of those moods where I'm really chatty, and I just want to sit down and slap some makeup on my face, and I'm kind of thinking about maybe doing like a Valentine's Day inspired look, you know, just because we're so close to Valentine's Day, and I kind of just want to play with the whole like Valentine's Day vibe and do like a pink, red, and maybe like a lavender type of look. I don't know. I have like a vision in my head, and I think it might be really cool. And also, I am kind of debating on doing like a monthly obsessions type of video. You know, like a monthly favorites, but instead of it being like a couple of things, I do like a full face glam. Because I'm one of those people, I get really obsessed with a product for a hot minute and then I go on to the next thing. But it might be like things I rediscover in my collection that I just pick up and be like, dang, why did I stop using this? Or, you know, things that I just recently got that I've been using a couple of weeks and haven't been able to put down. I'm also this way with music. Like, I will find a song that I really like and I will not be able to, like, stop listening to it. I will even listen to it for, like, three hours straight on repeat. Let me know if I'm, like, a little bit crazy with that. I feel like I'm the only person that does that. But let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see something like that on my channel. And also, before we jump into it, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and also give this video a like. And if you'd like to check me out over on my Instagram page or my TikTok, it is at Brianna Faye as well. So lately I've been trying to use my P. Louise base a little bit more. I'm just going to go in with this shade Rumor 0.5. I see everybody talk about it and say it's so good, but I don't know. It's just, it's not bad. It's just not like my absolute favorite, but I'm trying to use it more just to see like what the hype is about because maybe the more I use it, maybe I'll like it a little bit more. I don't know, but I'm just going to take it on this brush from Morphe. It's like this big shader brush and this one's out of the Pride Collection. So the palette that we are going to be using today is the Beauty Bay Bright Matte 42 Color Palette. And I'm just saying, if you like rainbow palettes and you're okay with a palette being like 100% matte with absolutely no shimmer in it, this one is amazing. I mean, like seriously, look at how bright and fun this is. And it literally has everything that you need in here. I don't know, I really like this palette. And again, if you'd like to see like my original review on it or any of the other looks I have done with it, I'll have them all linked in the description box down below for you. These bigger palettes are just so awkward to hold up on camera, but I'm just going to go in with this light lavender shade right here first. And I'm just going to be taking it in my crease using this Luxie 227. It's like one of those pinched blending brushes. And I'm just going to be popping it in the inner third of my eye. Ooh, she is pigmented. I'm just going to take a little bit more and then kind of like fluff it up towards my brow. I'm trying to be a little bit careful in this area because sometimes I feel like I can over blend it. But honestly, you wouldn't even have to do two layers if you didn't want to. It's just a really intense shade. Now I'm actually going to fluff it in just a little bit further just so we can get a little bit better of a seamless blend in a second. So now I'm just going to go in this bubblegum pink shade and this one is called 2-2. It's like a true bubblegum and I'm just going to take it on this brush from Morphe. This one's an M456. And again, I'm just going to be popping that right in the center of my crease. And then doing these little circular motions to blend it upwards towards my brow. And I'm also slightly fluffing it into that lavender. But you see what I mean though? Like this palette's like really pigmented. You don't even have to build up the shades if you don't want to. I'm just going to go in with a little bit more. But this palette honestly just amazes me because it's, again, it's around like $20. You get really good pan sizes. The pigmentation's really nice. And, you know, you have, like, some palettes that are, like, in the $50s and $60, and they don't even have near as good of quality as this one does. And I'm also just going to take that brush that we applied the lavender with, with nothing additional on it, and then, like, feather it into Tutu. Like, right between the two colors, and then I'm just doing these, like, little back and forth motions. So now we're going to go in with the red, and I'm just going to go in with this one right here called Pop and Poppy. And I will warn you, this one does lean a little bit more on the pink side, but it still has, like, that red kind of vibe to it. I'm just going to be taking it on this teeny tiny little blending brush from Morphe. It's kind of similar to an M507 brush. But I'm just popping it in this outer third of my crease as well as kind of like bringing it into the lid. I will warn you though, this is one of those shades that can get a little bit over blended really quick and apparently Winnie is leaving me. <laughs> she can open and close the doors, it's kind of weird. But I'm just going to take a little bit more and kind of like deepen it up. You just want to be a little bit careful with this shade because again, it can get over blended really fast. It's definitely one of those shades I would recommend using a small brush with. Because the other day I was just playing around with it, you know, I was about ready to take off my makeup 
and let me tell you, like, it gave me, like, a full-on, like, real Helena moment. Like, if you listen to My Chemical Romance and you've seen the Helena music video, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm also just taking whatever's left on my brush and then feathering it into Tutu. Now I'm just gonna go in with a third layer to see if we can get it, like, a little bit more red. And I mean, like, yeah, it does build up, but again, it definitely leans a little bit on the pink side. No matter how many layers you do. And I'm just gonna take this little tiny shader brush with nothing on it. This is a Anastasia A3. And I'm just kind of like buffing out this edge because it was looking really harsh. And when I'm doing this, I kind of do like back and forth motions. You now I'm actually gonna bring in this Pop and Poppy shade just like a little bit further in, maybe like halfway. I know this is gonna sound really weird. It's gonna look kind of weird for a second. But I think it's gonna look a little bit better like head on. Because sometimes when you do your makeup from the side, it looks completely different when you turn your head. So that's why I'm kind of like bringing this right in a little bit further. So I want like a little bit more definition, so I'm just going to go in with this darker red in the palette. And this one is called Head Over Heels. I'm just going to use that same brush that we applied Pop and Poppy with, because why dirty more brushes than we need to? But I'm just going to apply it in my crease. And... A little bit on my lid in the area where we applied Pop and Poppy. I'm not bringing it the full way in. I'm just defining this outer edge. Like the first layer, she's cute and all, but I am gonna go in with a second layer just to really kind of like amp it up a little bit. That is what I was going for. You know, just like a little bit more red. I didn't want like a oxblood red or something like that. I just wanted like a touch more definition. So when we cut that crease, it'll just be a little bit more defined looking. So, I don't know if you guys play League of Legends or not. Personally, I love League. It is literally my favorite game ever, and I've been playing for so many years. I've been playing since Season 2, so I mean, like, it's been a while. But if you're familiar with the Heartseeker Ash skin, that's kind of where I'm pulling my inspiration from. You know, it kind of has, like, those reds, the pinks, and then, like, that little hint of purple to it. So off camera, I am just going to cut my crease. I'm just going to do, like, one of those half-cut creases, and then afterwards, I'll be right back to finish up the lid. So after cutting the crease, we got this ugly harsh line, and we're gonna get rid of it because, again, not the vibe I'm going for. So I'm just gonna go in with Pop and Poppy on that Anastasia A3 brush that we used earlier. And I'm just gonna pack it down on that chunkiness and then slightly bring it inwards. Just a little bit. Now you could go in with the matte white out of the palette for the late if you want like an all matte kind of moment, but I do want like a little bit of shimmer. I don't know, I think it's gonna be really pretty. So I'm just gonna go in with this Super Shock Eyeshadow from ColourPop, and this one's in the shade Frog. It's kind of like an icy iridescent purple. I'm just gonna be taking it on this little kind of like shader brush and packing it all over my lid. I've been really liking these Super Shock shadows lately. I kind of go in waves with them. Oh, they're just so convenient. Like, if you want, like, a quick and easy eye look, you just apply a matte color in the crease and then pop one of these on the lid and you're, like, instantly ready to go. And they can just bring a look to a whole other level, too. Especially the ultra glitter ones. You know, I'm just gonna go in with my finger. Because I know it's gonna make it way more sparkly. Yep. I definitely prefer applying these Super Shock shadows with my finger. Because it just makes them, like, extra sparkly. I mean, like, look at the difference it already made. And again, when I'm applying it, I'm doing like this little tapping motion. So for liquid liner today, I'm just going to go in with this one from NYX. It is the Epic Wear Eye and Body Liquid Liner, and I'm just going to go in with shade Red. Honestly, these liners are so underrated because they're super pigmented. They do not crack or flake, and they also have a lot of fun colors in this line. I especially like the red one, and then there's a gray, and then the white one. The white one is the best, though, because it's so hard to find a white liquid liner that doesn't flake or crack or require like tons of layers. Whereas the one in this line, you literally do one layer and you're good to go. Originally I was going to do a black wing liner, but I don't know, I thought red would be more fun. I also just really like the consistency of these liners because they're kind of like a liquid liner, but they almost have like a gel formula too. So they're really, really easy to work with, and they're not watery. So off camera, I just tight lined my waterline using this Huda Beauty Life Liner. I love the pencil. Like, it is so good. It's actually one of those ones where if you tight line it on the upper lash line, and then you wear a white liner underneath, it does not smear into it, which I absolutely love. Because it's super hard to find a black pencil liner that doesn't smear onto the bottom, but this one does not do it for me. 
So I'm first gonna curl my lashes using this Morphe Lash Curler, and let me tell you, this one is so life-changing. I don't know what it is about this one, but it's like really like spring-loaded, so it makes my lashes like super curled. Like there's just some like magic in this one, because I'm normally one of those people I'm like, eh, lash curler's a lash curler. And then for mascara today, I'm just gonna go in with Anastasia's Lash Brag, literally one of my favorites. I just love how bougie the tube is. But this one's like a really volumizing mascara without being like chunky and spidery looking. Like if you like va va boom lashes with a lot of volume, you'll probably really like this one. Now you guys know how I feel about my Kiss lashes, but I'm just gonna go in with these ones. I got them from Ulta the other day. Um, they are the Lash Couture Matte Black Faux Mink Collection, and they're in the style matte satin. And I just realized I had them out of the box, but I'm just gonna use tweezers to apply them, because this is my favorite method. I mean, you do what you like, but this is how I apply them. And the glue that I'm going to use is this one from Duo. Again, literally my favorite glue ever. This is the Quick Set Strip Lash Adhesive in white slash clear. But what I like about this glue is that you literally apply it to the lash and you can pop it on right away. You don't have to wait for it to dry because I'm one of those people I just can never like comprehend what 30 seconds and 10 seconds is. Because like some glues you apply them and you know you have to wait like over like a minute. Other ones you have to wait like 20 seconds and then it's already dry. Like I'm just so bad with like figuring out like how long I need to wait for it to get tacky. So this one I just like because it's really easy and I don't have to deal with it. So if you're like me and you like lashes, but you just don't understand like how long you have to wait, this one's bomb. And it's also formaldehyde free. Oh, I'm like running out. I have to like get in this tube. And again, I'm just taking it on these tweezers. I personally like to pop mine in the center first. Kind of like finesse the outer edge. Push down the inner corner and then pull on the outer corner. Just so it doesn't like um, poke me in this inner part. And then I also like to take my finger and kind of like push up this outer edge just a little bit. Kind of for like a little bit of a lift. Ooh, I just love these lashes so much. Like they are just so pretty. When I bought them online, they looked like they were gonna be like a really like thick and dense lash. Like I was like, are these gonna look like caterpillars on my eyes? And then I apply them to my eyes, you know, putting them on and I just think they look really pretty and almost have like this cutesy vibe to them. Now don't you judge my cat ears. I've been putting this headband on every time I've done my foundation recently and I don't know what it is but it really like holds my hair back so I don't get makeup in it. But for primer today I'm just gonna go in with this one from Milk. It is the Hydro Grip. I really like this one. Seriously like my favorite primer. And I do about a pump and a half. And then I like to focus mine in the center of my face. And then kind of like smear it outwards. Well, I just don't like the word smear. I don't know about you, but it just sounds kind of weird and gnarly. You know that quote, release the Kraken? Well, every time I touch my face, I always think it's like release the redness because my face just gets so red every time I touch it. Like it is so sensitive. I'm really ColourPop obsessed. I bet you guys are probably sick of it by now. But I'm just gonna go in with the Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Hydrating Foundation. I love this foundation so much. Like, it is so nice. And I wear shade Fair 03C. And I'm just gonna do like a pump and maybe like a quarter on the back of my hand. And I don't know, like, this foundation just makes my skin look really nice. Like, there's just something about it. Like, it's not like a super hydrating foundation. But it just has this really pretty effect on the skin and it literally lasts all day for me. Like the other day I got my card trapped in the snowbank and I had to dig it out. And this foundation literally did not budge at all. And it was like negative five outside. And like literally I walked back inside, I was like sweaty and nasty and my makeup did not budge at all. And I'm just applying it with a dampened sponge. I'm just using this one from the Morphe X Lisa Frank collection. I really like the sponges out of this set. I haven't used the small ones though because I'm not really a small sponge kind of gal. But the bigger ones are really nice. And also when I do my foundation, I don't really apply it underneath my eyes. Because I feel like the more product I apply underneath my eyes, it can get a little bit cakey and creasy. So I just try to stick with concealer under it. So if I look like I have like massive dark circles, I do, but it's just a little bit emphasized right now. 
So now we're going to cream contour and I have been doing it differently for like the last week and I'm just going to show you guys this technique because I have been really liking it. But I'm just going to go in with this Fenty Beauty Matchstick. You guys know I really like this one and this one's in the shade Amber. But to apply it, I'm just going to use this brush from Morphe. It's the E63. It launched, I think, with their new foundation. I don't know. When I bought the foundation, I got this brush for free. I really do not like that foundation though. Like it's terrible. But what I'm going to do is take my brush and like the bristles going down part, I'm just going to run it right on that matchstick. Just like literally coat it. And then I just go in. And it does look really like dark right away. But there's something about this brush that it just like buffs it out like butter. Like there's just something about this technique I just really like. Like it kind of like melts it better into the skin and almost looks a little bit more natural. I mean right now it is looking a little crazy but again I don't have concealer on or anything like that. I also feel like I use a lot less product this way too. Which I really like because sometimes I feel like I go through this matchstick like really heavy. And then in between I just um, apply a little bit more when I feel like I need it. And when I'm doing this too, I'm not doing like a, um, you know, like a swiping motion. I'm kind of like stippling it in. I'm kind of like doing these like little circular buffing motions. I don't know, I just really like this technique. I saw somebody do it like years ago and I don't know why I never did it. But when I saw this brush, I didn't think of foundation with it just because of how like, you know, it's kind of like a pinched one. And I was like, hey, I'm going to try this with my contour because lately I haven't been liking my contour. I don't know, it just feels like it looks kind of like chunky sometimes. And I don't think it's the product's fault, I think it's either my technique or that I have like a dent in my skull. Because, fun fact, when I was younger, I was at somebody's house and we were roughhousing, you know, like when you're like 8 years old, 10 years old. And this idiot ass kid took a couch cushion, you know like the ones that are like removable like you sit on, and he whacked me into a door frame. Like, I mean like full on like and whacked me right into it and it was like my skull so I have like a dent in my skull so like no matter what I do I always have like messy looking <laughs> contour on my forehead because of it like no matter how hard I try it never looks smooth but yeah so I have like a dent in my forehead it's not like a huge one it's just like you can feel it if you take like your finger on it and sometimes when I apply makeup on my forehead it kind of like emphasizes it like it kind of just like goes into the crevices of it. So for concealer today, I'm just gonna go in with Tarte Shape Tape and I wear shade 8B Porcelain Beige. I just always go back to this concealer. I recently grabbed it out of my collection and I just haven't been able to put it back since. Like there's just something so nice about it. Like it's full coverage. It, it like lasts all day for me. I don't know, I just really like it. I don't know that everybody likes it, but I don't know. I just think it makes my under eyes look like super smooth and nice. And I don't like to apply a lot either. I just do like a little tiny dab underneath each eye and call it good. Because you really honestly don't need that much product with this. Like a little goes a long way with it. And then again, I'm just taking that sponge, that stamp end, and then blending it up and out. And then I like to take the butt of my sponge and then kind of like tap out the edges of my contour. So for loose powder today, I'm just going to use this one from Anastasia. I personally like the one in the shade Vanilla. Like, I know a lot of people are like, oh, always go with translucent, but the vanilla just makes my under eyes look amazing. I don't know why I said it's so weird. But I like to focus this powder underneath my eyes. I literally apply it anywhere that I kind of like crease. So underneath my eyes, in these smile lines, on my chin, and then around my nose. Like this vanilla shade just kind of gives me like this full coverage effect. Like the translucent, like don't get me wrong, like it's nice and it does work really well. But this one like blurs my skin. And I also love that it has like a big little like sifter kind of thing. So I can like really get like a brush in it or my sponge. Okay, let me put you onto one of my favorite contour palettes right now. And that is this powder one from e.l.f. I personally wear shade light medium. But oh my gosh, like this stuff blends so nice. Like, if you're a beginner, this formula is amazing, but I'm just going to mix these two right here on the bottom. And what's nice about this, too, is that it is 100% matte. Like, there's absolutely no shimmer in it whatsoever. 
But I'm just going to be taking it on this F20 brush from Sigma. And I like to go underneath my cheekbone and then kind of like bring it up and out. But again, like it's just so blendable and easy to work with. If you've been wanting to learn how to contour and you don't know where to start or what to get, I cannot recommend this enough. And I also really like the highlighting shades in here too. This shade right here doesn't really work for me, but I like to use it to kind of like buff out the edges of my blush sometimes if it's looking a little bit like chunky or choppy. But this lightest shade though, this one is magic. I really like it if like my foundation's transferred and it looks like chunky and choppy. I just use a little bit of that on a dampened sponge and it completely gets rid of it. It like buffs everything in. So since we are doing a Valentine's Day inspired look, I'm just gonna go in with this heart shaped blush from ColourPop and this one's in the shade Love Me Not and it's kind of like a reddish pink. And I'm just gonna be taking it on this brush from ColourPop. It's an F32. I'm just going to apply it to my cheekbones and then kind of like blend it up and out. And I'm not gonna go like overboard with blush today either. I just want like a little hint of color. So for highlighter today, I'm just gonna go in with this one from ColourPop. I really like this one. Like this one is perfect for this time of year and going into spring. But this is the Super Shock Highlighter in the shade Candy Floss. It's kind of like an icy baby pink. And I'm just gonna take my brush and apply a little bit. And this brush again is from ColourPop. This is an F33. But, ooh, she is blinding. I really like this highlight. Honestly, these Super Shock highlighters from ColourPop are one of my favorites because they are extremely blinding and they're also very easy to apply. Like, if you like a good blinding highlight and you haven't tried ColourPops yet, like, they're really bomb. Even the pressed powder ones are really nice, too. I'm just gonna pop it a little bit on my nose, upper lip, and then slightly on my chin. Personally, I don't like highlighter as much anymore on my forehead. Like, it just looks so chunky and weird. So I just prefer it, you know, kind of like in this kind of area now. So for lips today, I'm first going to go in with this retractable lip liner from Koki. And this one is in the shade Pink Mauve. And then for lipstick, I'm just going to go in with this one from Anastasia. This is the Satin Lipstick in the shade Tease. So for the lower lash line, I'm just going to mirror everything that we did in the crease down here. So I'm first going to start with Pop and Poppy. Then apply Tutu in the center. Then I'm just going to go with Livin' for Lavender in the inner third. So for the inner corner highlight today, I'm just going to go back in with that Candy Floss highlighter. And I'm just going to be taking it on this brush from Profusion. This is an ES4. And I'm just going to be packing it like super heavy in the inner corner. Because I want it to be a little bit brighter than what we have going on on the lid. Oh yeah. Ooh, she's so pretty. I'm also going to take just a little bit underneath the inner tear duct area as well. But yep, that was definitely the play with highlighter. Like, that's just such a pretty color. Okay, this is seriously one of my favorite Valentine's Day looks I have ever done. I just love how it turned out. Like, it's very colorful and cutesy, but at the same time, we do have those glam elements, you know, like with the glittery lid, as well as with this kind of like lip combination. But in the comments down below, let me know what you think about this look, and also let me know what you're going to be doing for Valentine's Day. Personally, for me, I don't know if I have plans or not. I might get Domino's, I might get Taco Bell, who knows, I might just get both. But yeah, so if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and also give this video a like. And if you'd like to check me out over on my Instagram page or my TikTok, it is at Brianna Fate as well. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!